Hello, everybody. This is Noel Hidalgo. Um, we are recording this via Zoom. Uh, we will hopefully make this public if all things go well. Uh, I'm from Beta NYC and I'm joined with a few other individuals as we will walk you through the NYC Open Data Week 2020 informational webinar. Um, so I'm going to hand this over to Zachary from Moda to kick off the webinar. Thanks, Noel. Uh, my name is Zachary Fader. I work for the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics on the NYC Open Data Program. Um, and as Noel mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit about who we are and what Open Data Week is, but also give some details about this year's events in particular. Uh, so who we are, uh, Open Data Week is mainly two groups. There's actually a third group as well, uh, Beta NYC, Noel, uh, as you, you just met, and the New York City Open Data Program, which is a combination of the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications, and data from around New York City. Uh, but I'll let Beta NYC introduce themselves and we'll talk a little bit about the Open Data Program and more what that means. Thanks, Zachary. Uh, once again, my name is Noel Hidalgo. I'm the Executive Director of Beta NYC. And we, were, or we started off as a meetup uh, in 2008, and we have now become a full-fledged nonprofit organization. Uh, we're one of a few nonprofit organizations that really loves open data and wants to see the success of the city's open data program. Uh, we see the piece of legislation as a transformative piece of legislation uh, in improving essentially our mission statement. And we are a nonprofit dedicated to using technology, data, and design to improve everybody's lives. Um, our four core values uh, revolve around the freedom to connect, the freedom to learn, the freedom to innovate, and the freedom to collaborate. These four values were championed in a, a community written document that was published in 2013, shortly after the passage of the city's open data law. Uh, that document is called the People's Roadmap to a Digital New York City, um, where we outlined a number of different policy proposals and a number of ideas that we wanted to see successive administrations take on. A number of those ideas focused on improving the city's open data law, and we're really honored to have been a partner over the last six years to ensure that the open data law grows and becomes even better than what it was when it was first passed. And so what we work on uh, in the day to day is that we build prototypes that demonstrate and demystify open data. We then create educational programs that help further demystify open data and also teach you how to use those prototypes. We engage in research and advocacy uh, around the city's open government community to ensure that New York City is best in class uh, and that we're making sure that we have a city government that works for us, by us, and for the digital era that we're in. I'm now going to pass this back over to Zachary so he can further do the introduction. So if you're on this webinar, you probably already know what New York City Open Data is, uh, so we'll give a brief introduction for those of you who don't. Uh, so New York City is a city of about 8.5 million people. It's the largest city in the country and actually has the 19th largest workforce in the country of 300,000 municipal employees. And with that, they collect a whole lot of data to do their jobs. Uh, so every time their garbage is picked up or streets are cleaned or snow is removed, any time a tree is planted or maintained, um, but also the public collects data anytime you call 311, anytime you use the 311 app, there's data records being created. And this data exists about really every facet of city life. So this is a photo that we put together a few years ago uh, with visualizing some data points that you might see uh, and, and interact with if you're in Union Square where this photo was taken. So you can see there's a public recycling bin in the forefront foreground of the photo. And that's a data set. And there is street furniture slightly behind that. And that is also a data set. And there are parking tickets. And there are other things that I can't quite see. There's um, the taxi medallions. But basically, for every piece of New York City life, there are data sets that pertain to that for every agency that exists and in one facet of the city's operation or another. Those agencies have corresponding data sets. So as Noel mentioned, Open Data was started in 2009. So we are just recently celebrating our 10th birthday as a program. But in 2012, um, in March of 2012, the Open Data law was passed. And this is something that was 
from uh, community advocates, from people who use open data within government, from elected officials uh, getting together. And, and this uh, event of Open Data Week is kind of an outgrowth of that and a celebration of that anniversary. And we see open data as being a resource for all New Yorkers. So it's one thing to publish data and you can see on the open data portal, the top data sets, data sets by agency, you can find data sets. But really the idea behind open data is it's not just about city agencies and city government, but it's for every New Yorker. Uh, it, it's not created necessarily for the public consumption, it's created for internal operations, but once it is created, it's out there for everyone and we want more and more people to use it. And this is something that we stated explicitly as part of our open data plan, our open data for all plan. And this event, the, this, this week, this festival of, of open data it is helping to further that mission. Um, so we just released a report on the next decade of open data. If you go to nyc.gov slash open data, you can read it. But briefly, the pieces in the report that are most relevant is there's a cycle of impact for any kind of uh, data release starting with identifying a need and data sets and collection of data sets and then ending with people actually using the data sets and where open data week fits in is really in the translation from data sets that are available to people and uh, people actually using the data and understanding the data better so part of the open point of open data week of school of data of data to design which we'll talk about a little bit is having all those pieces and make, making sure that we are connecting those, we're, we're making that cycle, we're connecting that cycle between the, the people who create the data, the people who understand it best, and the people who, who are impacted by it, which is all of us. Um, so just briefly, the, the things that we are trying to do as part of this next decade of open data are improving the user experience for open data, making it easier to discover data sets to use them strengthening the city's capacity to work with and publish data, and then also building communities around data, again, connecting people who are experts in data, both within the government and outside of the government, to people who have questions and problems to solve. And I think Open Data Week really hits at all three of those. And then last but not least, um, a little look at open data by the numbers over the last year. So there are about 70, um, there are 40, 42 agencies that published new data sets in the last year. There's 100 agencies total or 100 publishers total. Uh, but if you look at the big picture, the, the number that really you could pay the most attention to is whoop, this 2,000 number. So we have over 2,000 data sets, depending on how you're counting, but a combination of, of tables and maps and different types of data from around the city, uh, again, that reflect every facet of city life. And part of the goal of Open Data Week is demystifying this, this um, 2,000 data sets and communicating it in a way that people could understand and is directly related to their, their experience living in New York City. And you can see this in more detail and other information about New York City Open Data, again, in our report, uh, nyc.gov slash open data. And with that, I'll turn it over to Malgosha to talk a little more about what Open Data Week is. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Malgosha. I'm a project manager at the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. Um, so a big part of our work um, with the Open Data Program, as Zachary already mentioned, um, is organizing our annual Open Data Week, um, which the Open Data team organizes together with Beta NYC. Um, and the idea behind Open Data Week is to truly celebrate um, open data. Um, promote open data and inform um, New Yorkers, well, first of all, that, um, that it exists, um, that they have um, this amazing resource um, at their disposal, um, and also to make them aware of the multitude of ways that New York City open data um, can be leveraged, um, and ultimately um, encourage um, all New Yorkers um, to, to use open data. Um, so we've already had um, four iterations of Open Data Week. Um, our inaugural event was in 2017. Um, and in um, 2020, Open Data Week will take place um, between February 28th um, and March uh, 7th. So it'll span two weekends and all the weekdays in between. So as you can see, it is truly a week um, long event. Um, 
So the um, kickoff event for Open Data Week this year uh, will be the Data Through Design um, Art Exhibition. Um, the, um, at the very end, um, concluding Open Data Week will be the NYC School of Data a conference, uh, which also happens to uh, coincide with International Open Data Day. Um, and also um, a um, anniversary of the passing of the New York City Open Data Law, which was on uh, March 7th, 2012. Um, so this is um, a visual uh, representation of um, Open Data Week. Um, as you can see, New York City Open Data Week is sort of an umbrella um, term that spans the New York City School of Data Conference, um, as well as the Data Through Design Art Exhibit, um, and all of the different events in between um, that happen um, across the five boroughs. Um, and this is where um, you all come in. Um, so Open Data Week would not be possible without the enthusiasm and support of organizations and people um, like yourself. Um, we really rely on, um, on the, all the um, organizers um, who pitch ideas and, and through their events help us promote New York City Open Data. Um, so you can get involved and submit ideas uh, for all the different um, types of um, events. Um, so for New York School of Data, the Data for Design, and all the various events in between. Um, and with that, I will pass it on back to Noel to um, talk a little bit more about International Open Data Day. Great. Uh, International Open Data Day is exactly what it sounds like. It is a global call to action. Uh, to host events, workshops, sessions, uh, anything that you can think of uh, that revolves around Open Data Day. Uh, it is one day where the planet celebrates open data. Um, we, Beta NYC, has been engaging in some way, shape, or form of International Open Data Day since it started uh, way back in 2008, 2009, something like that. So we're roughly celebrating 10 years of International Open Data Day. Uh, and we're really excited that Open Data Day, uh, Open Data Week, and School of Data and Data Through Design are all within the first week of March. Now, what we're celebrating specifically here in New York City on International Open Data Day is NYC School of Data. And NYC School of Data uh, has existed over the last few years as a celebration to embrace the city's open data law, to celebrate its transformative nature that helps us uh, do so many wonderful things. Not only does it give us an insight into how our government is performing, but it also helps demystify government operations. It also helps us see where we can improve our neighborhoods, our communities, and also ultimately use that for uh, either educational purposes, uh, we can use that for employment purposes, we can build new businesses off of that, um, so uh, NYC School of Data is going to be this year on Saturday, March 7th, which coincides exactly with the anniversary of the city's open data law. And what we're also interested in is looking for uh, topics, sessions, workshops, projects, GitHub repositories. If you're an organization, an, uh, a city agency, and you want to do office hours, we're interested in finding willing partners and participants who want to come to this one particular day, uh, which where there will be at least 300 people in attendance. Last year, we sold over 400 tickets. Uh, we will provide childcare, we'll provide the logistical infrastructure in regards to classrooms, in regards to uh, uh, projectors. We provide essentially all of the infrastructure for a conference and we help curate those particular sessions. Uh, we do the logistical planning around the food and childcare, as I said, that happens to be free. Uh, and then we provide an accessible uh, price point so that way you can engage with your neighbors, you can engage with your government, you can engage with your peers to really figure out and how to demystify the issues around open data, whether they be automated decision-making, whether they be service design, whether it be open technology, whether it's just data itself. School of Data is an opportunity for you to join with your neighbors and your government to really understand what's going on within open data. And I'm trying to get to the next slide. Uh, great. So uh, we're so honored to also be including data through design. Um, and I will 
uh, hand this off to the Moda team to continue the introduction of data through design. So data through design, as you saw in the previous circle slide, is the third piece of the Open, open Data Week. So Open Data Week is the large festival. There's the community conference that Noel just talked about, School of Data, and then Data Through Design is a exhibit of art and data and the intersection between the two of those. Uh, they are about to launch their call for artists, but last year the theme was not a number. Um, it was ex exhibit about numeric data, um, but the, similarly to last year, this year's theme will be related to, to that connection. Um, if you have a question about data through design, you can use the same form that we have for School of Data for Open Data Week submissions, and it will make it to the school, the data through design folks, but also um, they will be, again, putting out their call for artists in the, the very near future, so there'll be more information pending, yeah. pending there. And data do through design is a really unique opportunity to, to help kind of break the numbers and the data away from the tabular formats or to the KML files, you know, the, the shape files and represent data in a human way, in a way that uh, you can relate to it emotionally, visually, uh, and beyond just the, the digital object. Uh, we're so happy and so honored that data through design happens here in New York City in a way to transform uh, open data in a, in, in a, in a human way. Um, so hopefully uh, now that you know all the background information about the um, organizations that run Open Data Week and also about the Open Data Program, uh, we wanted to give you a bit more detail about what it actually um, entails um, to submit an idea for Open Data Week and how to uh, participate. Um, so um, anyone can submit a proposal um, for um, any of the three types of um, events uh, as part of Open Data Week. Um, for New York City School of Data a conference, um, also the um, exhibition as, as we've just spoke, uh, talked about, um, and also uh, to organize any of the individual events that happen throughout the week. Um, so we've had individuals pulling off events with certain institutional support. We've had nonprofits, advocacy groups, um, and also um, city agencies organize events. Um, and um, in terms of the type of event that we encourage, um, it's it, we're really leaving it to the event organizers to be as creative um, as they want. Um, so we've had um, panel discussions, fireside chats, um, if you want to do a workshop um, or training, um, that also um, is a great way um, of um, promoting open data uh, among New Yorkers. Um, we've had hackathons um, as well, and also um, showcases and demos. Um, so it's really, it, it's really up to you to be, to be creative, and we really mean that when we say that. Um, and we're happy to brainstorm with you um, if you're kind of stuck and, and need ideas or need help determining what the best format for your event is. Um, and uh, we're also um, happy to be kind of the matchmaker um, if you um, need um, a little bit more help with um, determining where to hold your, um, your event. Um, and to give you um, some, some background, so Open Data Week 2019, uh, we've had nearly 50 events, uh, which engaged um, 3,000 New Yorkers across um, the five boroughs, and, and we've had a multitude of events. Um, just to give you a few examples, um, we've had Queens College and CUNY students um, presenting interactive tools um, that they themselves created um, using uh, NYC Open Data. Uh, we've also had a um, LYLAS um, Labs Hackathon on environmental justice um, to advance environmental protection for New York City. Uh, we, we've also had a design workshop um, for city agencies to re-envision um, a map Pluto, uh, which is a tool used, used here in the city. Um, and we've even had a workshop on um, SQL um, for, for New Yorkers. So as you can see, um, the, the format is very varied, the participants also, the kind of the audience of all these events, um, as well as the, the organizers. So um, to get to um, kind of the, the meat of things um, in terms of um, submitting your proposal, um, we're looking for submissions by the December 13th deadline um, via an online form. Um, and you'll hear back from us by the end of December um, as to whether you were selected to organize an Open Data Week event. 
Um, and we also, um, to make your life easier, um, want to share with you certain criteria based on which we will be judging your submission. Um, so we're really looking to um, understand how you plan to engage New Yorkers, um, and this could include city staff, um, and how do you plan to raise awareness about open data through your event. Um, however, we're also really um, interested in knowing how inclusive your event will be given the um, open data for all um, nature and of open data week. Um, so does it, or do you have any provisions that help um, New Yorkers um, that, for example, need childcare or um, are traveling from other um, ends of New York? Um, and then do you have any additional uh, resources um, that um, you would require? So um, do submit your proposal by December 13th. Um, and if you have any questions, we have some resources. Uh, we have a um, landing page um, on the Open Data Week website with frequently asked questions. Um, you please also um, look at the Open Data Week 2019 website, which is still up. We will be replacing it soon with um, Open Data Week 2020. But for now, you can see what past events have happened. And of course, also uh, contact us with any questions you may have. Great. Um, I would like to add that if you're a uh, if you're considering hosting an event uh, and you're concerned about the logistical impl implications or the concerns of where do I find a space or you know like what should I do I would uh, suggest that you apply uh, that session at, uh, apply or propose that as a session to School of Data. Uh, the reason why is, you know, Beta NYC is essentially doing all of the that logistical work, uh, and we're looking at it already inclusive venues that will provide the opportunity to have a diverse format of sessions. So not only are we looking for talks or proposed panels or workshops or demos, uh, we're also looking for office hours. So we're 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 trying to be that catch-all for any other organization or entity that is looking to host an event inside of Open Data Week, but just doesn't know how to get there. Um, so with that, um, I think we have some uh, questions that we've been getting from a number of people that we would like to address as part of this uh, webinar. Um, with that, what is a, Zachary, what's a good example of uh, an inclusive event uh, besides kind of uh, facilities that's a, a available for everybody? So the facilities piece, I think that's important um, to talk about a little bit more. So there's a few ways to think about that. One is, is, is it accessible by public transportation? Two is if someone is differently abled, how would they be able to physically access the building? Is, is there an elevator or some other means of entrance? Um, so so there, there is certainly the physical space. Um, is there someone translating? Is, is there sign language available? Um, that, that's one piece. But another piece is really thinking about open data for all, what, what, what's the topic being discussed? Is it something that is extremely technical? If so, what will people do um, that, that don't have that level of understanding? So uh, not every single event doesn't have to be one that hits on every single level of ability, but we want to make sure that as many events as possible are appealing to a larger audience. Um, the, the other piece that we want to, to make certain of is that the events are inclusive to wide groups of New Yorkers. Um, and Noel, do you want to talk a little about how you ensure that for, for your events generally? Yeah, um, so one thing that we look at is um, the framing of the conversation. Um, we have a number of code of conducts uh, that we embrace. Uh, that make sure that the conversations are yes and, um, that they're constructive, that they're solutions oriented, or at least uh, uh, framed in such a way where there's a positive uh, uh, opportunity to affect change. Um, and so we don't want just a, a, a negative, uh, critical lens of a conversation, but we wanna create a framework where there is a constructive dialogue or at least an insightful piece uh, that lets everybody come away from that conversation. And ways to make that even more inclusive is be mindful of the language that you're using, uh, be mindful of the terms that you're using, 
uh, as Zachary uh, pointed out, if you can provide or uh, work with entities that can do sign language or childcare or you know, making the room as flexible and as open as possible, um, making sure that your events, if you're in a big room, that they're mic'd, so that way people who have uh, hearing impairment issues are able to uh, uh, hear uh, all the way in the back. Um, you know, think, think about the as inclusive as possible. Um, if you're not a techie, you know, think about how you can use uh, 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 paper and pencil, uh, think about ways of doing post-it note sessions. Um, you don't, this does not need to be a, a, a super technical uh, type of event. Uh, it can be, um, you know, you can have people do a session where they uh, visualize or, or embody what they think open data should be uh, and turn that into a creative output that then gets documented and then shared out so that way agencies and the city or other organizations can uh, see the, the feelings and the emotions and the, the impact that open data has. Um, yeah, is, so, is that? Well, one thing just to add to that generally, and this is sort of your, your question before about what do I do if I have an event idea but I don't necessarily have a venue. I would say if you have questions about access and inclusivity, if you have questions about a venue, if you're not quite sure, whether your data through design event or an open data week event, just submit through our application. Um, there's the link at the open data week landing page. There's also the bit.ly link within this, this presentation. We'll share that around after and we'll do our best to help you uh, to, to make sure that whatever you're proposing meets that criteria. And then if need be help you find a space or a place to have, have your event, whether that's an open data week, whether that's uh, in the school of data conference or data through design. So, Malgosha, what if I'm already hosting an event that happens to be during Open Data Week? Can I list it as part of Open Data Week? Uh, absolutely, uh, as long as it's related um, to um, New York City Open Data, um, and as long as it meets all those um, inclusivity requirements that we have just spoken about. But yes, definitely, a lot of organizations um, do do that, um, where they already have um, events scheduled in that given week. Um, and they um, and they kind of um, include them, and we include those events as part of the um, as part of our our Open Data Week. So, um, so yes, definitely. And and where can I have events? Like, what, what what part of the city is it? Is it only this one school data conference or? No, so School of Data is only one of the events as we as we spoke. Um, it's the concluding event um, of Open Data Week, but um, events um, happen all throughout New York City and all the different all the five boroughs. So we re really encourage um, events um, to happen in um, some more remote parts of New York City as well um, to make it accessible to people who who live in outer Queens, who live in outer. Uh, Bronx, um, and not just have events that sort of centered or center around Manhattan. And if I, let's say I had a tool that I wanted to demo during Open Data Week, uh, but wanted to maximize its reach across all five boroughs, can I host a virtual event of sorts? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, that works as well. Um, we uh, we would encourage you to have a um, physical event um, in addition to the virtual event, um, but we would also be open to having virtual events um, that people can uh, can access through like web and these kinds of webinars um, or online links. Great. So, no, if I want to host an event but I need a co-host, how would I go about finding that that person in that group? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, Beta NYC offers a number of online resources for you to connect with our 5,000 plus community. Uh, you can go to our website, beta.nyc forward slash community, and there you will find links to our Slack group. Uh, we have a, a close to 2,000 members in our online Slack. Uh, we have a fairly quiet uh, general channel, so you can hop on there and, and chat away and start asking questions of, I'm interested in hosting this type of event. Uh, does anybody have any resources? Does anybody have a, is anybody interested in being a co-host? We also have a, a Facebook group if you're 
on Facebook um, that has uh, about a thousand people uh, where you can go ahead and, and ask the same question. You know, I'm really passionate about this particular subject matter and I would love to know who uh, or where can I host this particular uh, session. Um, we're, it's a pretty open and, and inclusive community uh, and we're always looking to help each other out. Um, and then we have a meetup page, um, which we have been using uh, to really to promote our events. So if you're ever looking for an opportunity to help uh, promote your open data event, we're very interested in helping you promote your open data event. So not only are these online uh, resources places that you can go to, uh, but feel free to reach out to us as to be event partners to help echo uh, your concerns uh, or desires to promote an open data event. Uh, once again, if you have any question at all and you wanna ask kind of the collective wisdom of the Open Data Week organizers, please send an email to team at open-data.nyc. That email address goes to the data through design people, it goes to the open data team at, uh, at the city government, and it goes to Beta NYC, and we will give you a response roughly within 24 to 48 hours in regards to the concerns or questions that you might have. So um, we, I would also like to give a shout out to Kate Nicholson, who has been manning the, or woe wo manning uh, the questions and concerns line. Uh, and she sent in this text message here that says, would a mapping event count? Uh, for instance, if I wanted to verify OpenStreetMap data and organize a, a walkabout. Um, there are, are many types of open data events uh, that we are looking forward to hosting. Uh, just recently, uh, Beta NYC, Department of Transportation, um, uh, and the Mayor's Office with People with Disabilities hosted, co-hosted a hackathon around editing open street maps. There's a very, very active community here in New York City that's passionate about making data, uh, not just using open data. And so this open street map community uh, is also passionate about making sure that data beyond the street is mapped and so that looks at bike lanes and sidewalks. Um, if you go to our uh, blog, beta.nyc, and look for the Mapping for Mobilities hackathon, uh, you will find material that you can use to go out to your community and help map your bike lanes, your sidewalks, your crosswalks, the curb cuts, as well as other information on how you can help create open data in open street maps. Um, Kate, thanks, and for whomever else asked that question, uh, we'll make sure that we can add some links so that way Open Data Week isn't just about reading data, but it's also about creating data. And as far as the format of an event, last year there was a scavenger hunt. We want to encourage people to have as many kind of out of the typical computer screen presentations, laptop events as, as they, they find interesting. And again, if you have a proposal for an event but not quite sure to partner with, you could always look at to Beta NYC to help you find that, but also just submit something to the Open Data Week application, and we'll do our best to, to match you up with someone as well. Great. Um, do we have any other questions? What about a, a what's an example of like a, a good event? What are the things I want to uh, besides inclusivity and accessibility that I should be keeping in mind? This variety of venue and and yeah, topic. well. Well, you know, uh, gender expression is, is a very important thing also to keep in, in mind. Um, I know that I've attended a, a one too many technical panels where it just seems like a bunch of men uh, are, are speaking their minds. Um, and so I would encourage the, the community to be thinking forward about how do we make uh, as inclusive of events, not only uh, the venue, but also representation on either the panel um, or the people that are in the front of, of the event. Um, and you know, New York City is such a wonderful place that this is the home to so many civil rights movements. There are quite a few uh, diverse individuals throughout our, our five boroughs that would be willing to speak on the intersectionality of, of open data and, and other issues. And please feel free to submit multiple ideas as well, and we'll consider all of them. So. 
Um, we'll follow up with um, some other links. I think in the FAQ, there's some links to uh, recommendations from uh, Mozilla Foundation's MozFest on how to have an inclusive uh, uh, event, ways to be thinking through how do you structure an event to be as inclusive as possible. Um, and I think we'll also make sure that the FAQ includes South by Southwest's guidance. Uh, they've been running a very popular festival for many, many years, and they have some really good recommendations out there on exactly how to um, uh, construct an event uh, that, or an event proposal that's inclusive as possible. So great. Any, any final questions? No? No. Great. Well, uh, for those of you who are on the webinar, thanks again for taking these 40 minutes with us. Uh, we look forward to working with you and we look forward to seeing you uh, out at an Open Data Week event. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please, please, please email us. Uh, we are here to help. Thanks, everyone, and have a great Thanksgiving. Great. Happy holidays.